Sorry for not posting these past few weeks. I've been going through stuff that I absolutely mentioned in my AO3 author's notes, if you were wondering. Hello fellow fic writers, kudos for clicking on this video. My name is Cora and I'm here to help you write and post your dream fanfiction. Picture this, you've been working on a story for a while, planning it, drafting it, editing it, and once you have a backlog or at least a first chapter you're proud of, you finally post it and wait for the comments and kudos to come flooding in. Crickets. No comments, no feedback, barely any hits. You might have a handful of kudos, but that's really it. At this point, you might do one of two things. Either assume people will never be interested in your story and give up now, or keep posting until finally you get your first comment on, say, chapter five. And then it doesn't pick up much after that. Unless you're a writer of popular tropes and popular pairings, I assume this scenario is familiar to you. But fear not, there is a way to set up your next fanfic for success on the first chapter, and that's what we'll be covering in this video. Prologue, a disclaimer. Much like my how to get more comments on your fanfic video, I cannot teach you how to get a flood of engagement and feedback, nor can I teach you how to become a big name fan. These strategies are all about cultivating a niche following for your next story so that you feel supported by your fandom community, which may be just the encouragement you need to continue posting your work. Chapter 1. Pitch your fic on social media. No one is going to care about your next big multi-chap unless you build the hype. So you need a basic premise and points of interest to post on the social media channels of your choice. Tumblr, Twitter, Discord, wherever you live your fandom life. One of the big reasons why I started writing my Twilight Princess fanfic, The Light Invasion, was because when I first posted about it on Tumblr, several people expressed interest, some quite enthusiastically. I even had the opportunity to share my idea with one of my favorite fic authors, whose work inspired many aspects of TLI, and it piqued his interest too. When I joined my OTP's Discord server and told them about TLI, they also got really excited for it. I even had one person beg me to let them read the first chapter early, which they did. If you plan to post about your fic on social media prior to publishing it, I recommend you have the following at the ready. Page 1, a sentence to sum up your premise. Often this can be phrased as a what-if scenario. What if instead of the Twilight invading the Light Realm, the Light invades the Twilight Realm? If you've played Twilight Princess, you'd probably understand the chaos that would ensue. Page 2, a working summary. Never underestimate the power of a good summary. Even if the summary you use to promote your fic isn't the final one you use, it's something. It's always good to have that something. Page three, a list of three to six elements readers can look forward to. These could be tropes, pairings, or intriguing headcanons, anything you think might loop people in. In my pinned post promoting TLI on my Tumblr blog, I promise enemies to friends to lovers midlink, badass Zelda, charismatic villains, fortnightly updates, and hard-won happy endings. Just make sure you deliver on anything you put on that list, otherwise readers who follow the fic as it updates are going to feel misled. Finally, if you can draw art for your fic, that is by far the best way to promote it. If not, no worries, you can either commission artwork or take an intriguing quote from your work in progress and create a graphic in Canva. Just make sure you use stock images or official art. Never use fan art without permission from the artist. 
Another thing you can do on Tumblr in particular is have a dedicated tag for your fic. That way, when you post about it, anyone curious can click on that tag and learn more. Chapter 2. Promote in the author's notes of another fic or fics. If you're posting one fic while writing another, especially if it's the same fandom or niche, tease your next project in the ANs a little. You don't have to share much at first. I'm working on a canon divergent slow burn for this ship, or I've been writing a retelling of this source material is enough for now. Later on from that, when you've really committed to this idea, you can gently remind your readers to subscribe to you as an author so they don't miss out on your next project. When you finish posting Fic 1 and have the debut chapter of Fic 2 ready to go, that's when you drop that one sentence pitch, that list of teasers and that summary. If you're on AO3 and maybe Wattpad, I don't know, then you can even link your next fic in the author's notes of your current one. Wait, most people don't just have chapter 1 of fic 2 ready to go as soon as the finale of fic 1 has been posted? Some of the people watching this video may have already finished posting their fics before they even started writing the next one. Okay, maybe I'm the odd one out here. But that's fine. You can still go back and edit the final ANs of your previous fic, or any fic that you think would draw the kind of readers who would like your work in progress. If your readers love your work, they'll be super stoked to see you have more of it. And if you're watching this video as someone who's never posted a multi-chapter before, that's okay. You can do the same thing with your one-shots. No one-shots? Also valid. You can add the teaser to your author bio. So many writers, myself included, will check out every registered user who interacts with our fic. So having that teaser in your bio might be what prompts them to click subscribe to user. Chapter 3. Nail your summary. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Never underestimate the power of a good summary. I've already created a full video breaking down how to write a good summary for long fix with plot, but here are the cliff notes for you. Page 1. Your summary isn't meant to summarize your fic, but spark enough curiosity in the reader to make them click on it. Make sure your summary teases the premise of the story, the main conflict, and the main relationship, or relationships. Page 2. Short and sweet. Keep your summary under 384 characters or around 65 words. Yes, even if you're posting on AO3 and not fanfiction.net. Page 3. Avoid cliche phrasing like, this is the story of, little do they know, or will character A confess their feelings to B before it's too late? Page 4. Deliver on your promises quickly. Do not tease something that only becomes relevant to the story several chapters in. Readers want to see what they came for as soon as possible. Page 5. If writing a summary is still too hard for you, find a good teaser quote from your story and use that instead. The more relevant that line is to your story's premise, the better. Page 6. Hybrid summaries. Posting on AO3? Want the most banger summary possible? Quote a key line from your story and follow it up with a 50 word summary. I have spent hours perfecting my summary and while most people might think that's overkill, it probably is. I consider that time well spent. If you don't want to be like me and spend more than three hours on your summary, <laughs> valid, please check out my other video, Write Epic Summaries, so you can learn all the tips and tricks I didn't know for years. Chapter 4. Have a planned number of chapters. I know this isn't going to work so well for pantsers unless they have the full fic written in advance, but for the planners with chapter-by-chapter -chapter outlines, if you have even an 
estimate of how many chapters your fic will have, put it in this box on AO3. The reason why is because people feel more comfortable reading an incomplete fic when they see that the author has an end goal in mind. They know if they're entering a 10 chapter novelette or a 200 chapter epic, and they know there's a better chance this fic will be completed someday. You know what this means, right? If you're the kind of writer who gets an idea, smashes out the first chapter or two, and then posts it right away, only to run dry of inspiration, then you might need to start outlining or at least thought dump your story and hold off from posting until you have a significant backlog of chapters already written. The more you post new works in progress and then abandon them, the less likely readers who regularly check your fandom spaces will give your newest works a go. If you're that kind of writer, then having an expected number of chapters is even more important. It gives readers faith that this might be the fic you actually finish. Chapter 5. Inform anyone who showed interest in your next fic. Okay. Remember back in chapter 1 when we covered how to build hype for your upcoming fic on social media? I hope you saved those Discord messages and posts, because on the day you finally debut chapter 1, you're gonna need them. Look at what people have said in the replies and notes. Has anyone expressed enthusiasm for your fic, or a desire to read it once it's available? Now is the time to respond to them directly with a link to the new fic. They might miss it otherwise, because they don't follow you online, regularly check new updates in the fandom, or your fanfic might just get lost in the flood. Now, please make it clear to anyone you contact directly that there is absolutely no pressure or obligation to read your new fic. You're only tagging them because you thought they might appreciate it. In this case, you need to center their enjoyment and convenience over your own desire for feedback. Otherwise, you'll come across as pushy and entitled. <laughs> Even better, when someone expresses interest in your upcoming fic on Tumblr, you could ask them if they'd like to be put on the tag list for when the fic gets posted. That way you can be 100% sure that you're doing them a favor rather than bugging them. Chapter 6. Encourage and reply to comments. So, because a lot of AO3 readers tend to think engagement is synonymous with quality, it's not. It creates this feedback loop where the most popular stories are the most likely to be read. Unfortunately, that's just how things work in the world of fanfiction right now, but there is at least one way you can try to benefit from it. Encourage comments. Don't demand them. Don't withhold your chapters until you get them, just encourage them. Say all good faith comments are welcome, whether long or short, analytical or emotional, wordy or full of emojis, praise or constructive criticism. Ask a question related to the debut chapter in your ending ANs so readers can have an easier time thinking of what to say. And when you do get comments, reply to them. One of the most common reasons I see for why someone chooses not to comment is that they see the author doesn't respond to people who have commented already, so they just don't see a point in commenting themselves. That's why you should respond whenever you can. If you want to learn more about how to encourage comments on your story, I strongly recommend you check out my other video, How to Get More Comments on Your Fanfic. So there we have it, six ways to set up the first chapter for success. Have you tried any of these before? Are there any you look forward to using in future? Let me know in the comments below. And that's the end of the video. Kudos for watching, kudos for liking, and extra kudos if you've subscribed and hit the bell for more dreamy fanfiction tips. I will see you in my next video, but in the meantime, happy fic writing!